Thanks for uh, scheduling me right after uh, John Paul's talk, which is really, really good because this really was the motivation for, for this work, um, as you'll see the, the, the close connections here. Um, and so first of all, let's just, just let me acknowledge a, a long list of collaborators on this paper, uh, which is now available in, in, in SIOPT. Um, okay, so, so let me just set, set up some, some notation here. My notation will be just a little bit different. Um, and I'm going to be focusing on uh, stochastic mixed integer programs, uh, focus just for simplicity on the two-stage case. Um, and so this is what the problem looks like. We have our, our first stage variables x. These are sort of the here and now decisions that we have to make before observing whatever, whatever uncertainties there are. Um, they should satisfy some constraints. We have some continuous variables, some integer variables. Um, and then after observing the, 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 the random outcomes, which is this random variable c, uh, then we go off, we solve a recourse problem. Uh, which, which furthermore has these decision variables y, and some of those may also be integer variables. Okay, so, so, so this may be a two-stage uh, stochastic program with integer variables in both stages. Uh, in general, can be difficult to solve at the global optimality. So uh, I think actually I can, I can skip this because John Paul did a really nice uh, uh, job introducing lots of different interesting applications of this. Um, um, so this was just going to be some, some examples there. Um, first thing I want to do though is just, just describe the, you know, the, the framework we're going to do. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assume we have a finite number of scenarios of our uncertainty. Um, so I'm going to index that by the, the, the set capital S. Um, and just to for, write this down, we can, we can, once we do that, we can actually formulate this as a very large scale deterministic mixed integer program. Okay, so this is sort of always known as a deterministic equivalent form. Um, and so what we, all we would do is we just introduce a vector of, var of variables ys for every different scenario. Um, and so we just have these constraints for every different scenario s satisfying uh, what you're allowed to do in that recourse, uh, what you would do if that were the scenario that, that shows up. Um, and then we minimize our first stage cost plus the average of all the second stage costs over all these things. Okay, so, so technically this is just a really super large deterministic mixed integer program. Um, and our goal is going to be to try to t decompose this. So because of the number of scenarios might be relatively large in order to, to, to approximate the uncertainty, this is too large to just give to, to standard solvers. It might not even load. It might be just, just too big. But we are going to assume that we can solve a single scenario at a time version of this mixed integer program, okay? Because it's mixed integer linear, we have good technology for that. So we're going to assume we can solve a single scenario at a time. And so that's going to be our goal is to take this really large mixed integer program and decompose it into sort of a single scenario at a time. Or maybe if you use some bundling, a couple scenarios at a time. Um, okay, so we're going to use sort of this, this, this approach that, that John Paul Wetchen mentioned, uh, dual decomposition as sort of the, 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 the base underlying this to get a, a strong uh, bound for this problem. Um, and so this is basically just a, a variable splitting technique. Um, and so what we're going to do is those first stage variables, which are supposed to be made here now, they can't really depend on the scenario because you have to make it now before knowing which scenario you should be in. You're going to make a copy for every different scenario anyway, and you have some master copy Z. And we just add these constraints that say, really all these copies of the variables are all supposed to be equal to the master copy and hence all equal to each other. Okay, so we add these constraints. Um, and we obtain this, this sort of variable splitting reformulation. Uh, just introducing some notation here now is the set KS is going to be the, the, the set of all the constraints, including the first stage constraints, um, and then the constraints on the recourse variables in scenario S. So there's one of those sets of constraints for every different scenario. Um, and so I write, um, with, I use my split variables, XS and YS, so that part's sort of decomposed by scenario. And then what's looking at together now is just these, these constraints that basically say all the, the first stage variable copies should be equal to each other. Um, okay, and so then what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to do, do the standard thing you would do here is apply a Lagrangian relaxation uh, to these uh, uh, constraints that say they're all equal to each other, and we get this Lagrangian dual function. So for each of these uh, S cap cardinality of S constraints, we have a, a vector lambda S, uh, put that all together uh, into this Lagrangian uh, dual function. Okay, so, so for any fixed lambda, if you solve this, uh, you get a... Uh, lower bound on our, our mixed integer program. Okay. Uh, and so what's nice about this is that it achieves our goal is that we actually do decompose the problems for any fixed lambda into a separate subproblem for each of these uh, um, scenarios. Um, and this is, each of these is, is a mixed integer linear program on, under one scenario. Okay, so we're assuming here that we can solve these reasonably fast, but, but we should also remember that this is not a, this is not a trivial subproblem, that, that it is going to take some time and we want to make sure that we make the, the most use out of the information we get from those subproblems. 
Um, OK, and then just one, one last thing. We, the way we sort of formulated this, we had this mass of variable z, the, which was unconstrained. So sort of a dual feasibility condition is that the sum of all those dual multipliers uh, should be equal to 0. Um, OK, so then the Lagrangian dual problem is we're going to try to actually find uh, the, the, the best lower bound. So we're going to maximize over all the sort of dual feasible uh, vectors lambda this Lagrangian dual function. OK, so this is, this is uh, what we'd like to do. Uh, this, of course, is high dimensional because we have sort of a, a vector for every one of our scenarios. So it's high dimensional. It's a non smooth concave function of lambda. Um, and, but, of course, it's, it's easy to, you know, for, for feasible things, where e it's easy to get uh, subgradients once we've solved all those scenario subproblems. Um, OK. And so the first thing that's going to motivate this is, is to, again, just applying standard Lagrangian theory to understand. Uh, what is the, the, the strength of this, this sort of Lagrangian dual bound that we're going to get? So there's not going to be strong duality because it's a non-convex problem. Um, but we can still say something about what is uh, the, the, the strength of this bound. And so, so this is sort of the primal characterization, similar to what uh, Shabir mentioned this morning, um, is basically we're just going to be optimizing sort of our original uh, objective function over now where we have the constraints that are our first stage variables x and the, the recourse variables are in the convex hull of those mixed integer constraints for one scenario at a time. Okay, so this is to basically we're convexifying this mixed integer set one scenario at a time and then putting it back together. Okay, so it's not as good as the full convex hull because we split it out one scenario at a time, but it's still doing a lot of sort of convexifying and, and getting a strong uh, a bound. Um, and so in general, unfortunately, this still might not be a strong dual. Um, there may be a strict gap between this, but it's certainly at least as good as the usual linear program relaxation. Um, and in practice, we find that this, this dual bound is actually typically very close to the, the stochastic mixed integer programming optimal value in many cases, or you can improve it quite, quite a lot by using uh, this, this bundling approach. I won't talk about that, but that easily fits into this, this uh, framework as well. Um, OK, so, so for our focus is going to be trying to just find this Lagrangian dual bound. Um, and then maybe you uh, combine it with some good heuristics for getting primal solutions and, 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 and understand how good those primal solutions are. Um, OK, so, so OK, I don't have to spend much time reviewing progressive hedging with this audience, but just to maybe um, sort of explain how it fits um, in, in the way we think about it. So it's typically for convex stochastic programs. Um, and, and as we know, it's a, an application of ADMM. Um, and so maybe just to sort of describe that this is in our no my notation, this is how it would look. Um, we would basically be solving for every one of our scenarios um, this sort of uh, augmented subproblem where the zk minus 1 is sort of from the previous iteration as kind of the master copy variable. Um, after having solved that, then this is sort of the, 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 the second part of ADMM where we sort of solve for the second block. It turns out to be just averaging over the solutions from all of these in this case. Um, and then we do an update of our dual multipliers for every scenario okay, and iterate this. Um, OK. So, so you know, as, as John Paul mentioned, though, sort of the natural thing you might try to do is to, to extend this uh, for the case when you have mixed integer programs is basically at each iteration, you just solve, a still, you, you just apply this exactly as, as you would. So you have this, this mixed integer uh, program, mixed integer quadratic programming subproblem. Uh, where now we have these integer restrictions. Um, and so this is, um, as John Paul mentioned, it can be a very effective basis for heuristics. So that's, that's really good news. And furthermore, if you just run this, you can stop at any point, get the, 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 the dual vector that you have from that, and then plug it into the Lagrangian and get a dual bound from that. Okay? So this is stuff that was, was uh, observed earlier and sort of motivated us to, to consider this. Um, and so the limitation, though, so, so, was, so this is this part here, um, the limitation is that you know, this theoretically only converges to the best possible Lagrangian dual bound. It can only be guaranteed to converge to the best possible dual bound when this thing is convex, which is not the case for this mixed integer linear programming case. Okay, so, so that's sort of a, a gap there. Of course, we know that you know, this is a, it's a concave uh, maximization problem, you know, non-smooth. You, you could just apply a subgradient method alternatively to solve that Lagrangian dual problem. Uh, but that tends to have slower convergence. Um, and really requires significant tuning. So we, we like to try to see, is there something that we can do that's more of a progressive hedging style algorithm that can be guaranteed to converge to this uh, Lagrangian dual uh, bound. Um, OK, so the first observation, which actually also appeared in one of these earlier papers and, and, and helped motivate us as well, is that if, in fact, 
you ran this, this uh, progressive hedging algorithm, and somehow you could solve this subproblem at every step, which is different because look, notice we have a quadratic objective function here. So here, this is not the same. I, here, I change it to instead of optimizing over the, the mixed integers at chaos, I'm optimizing over the convex hull of that. So this is different than, than what was proposed in, in the previous thing. But if you could solve this, then this is really just becomes a convex program, and it would convert to the Lagrangian dual, and everything would be, be fine. Uh, and so this is really sort of the key sub problem you somehow like to be able to solve within this progressive hedging algorithm. Um, unfortunately, um, this, this is really difficult to do sort of with state-of-the-art, you know, sort of or off-the-shelf software directly uh, because you don't have an explicit representation of this convex hull. That's something that's very difficult to, to handle. Um, and so, so, you know, we have this, you know, notion of can we try to solve this with some other methods? Um, and so, you know, basically, you know, I remember seeing this and, and I read sort of a, a review article about uh, Frank Wolf methods and it just clicked to me that, hey, you know, why don't we use one of these Frank Wolf type simple de decomposition methods, which basically is solving a sequence of problems with a linearized objective in order to solve some, some problem over a convex set. Okay, so that was sort of a, the, the, the initial thought. Um, and the key point of that is if we have a linear objective, then optimizing over, over a convex hull is the same as optimizing over the set itself, and you can use off-the-shelf software for those subproblems. Okay, so that was sort of the main um, uh, uh, idea for this. Um, okay, so okay, what's, what's this, this Frank Wolf, or uh, really we use simplicial decomposition, which is sort of an improvement on that. Uh, algorithm for, for solving this, this key subproblem. So we initialize, we have some, some set of points. We're going to think of these points as being uh, a subset of the extreme points of the convex hull of this set. We're going to build that uh, set of extreme points up. Um, we have some initial point here. Uh, it's going to turn out to be convenient to initialize this uh, with the previous sort of average point from the progressive hedging. We'll see where that, 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 that helps in a minute. Um, and so, you know, to, to solve this by, by this simplicial decomposition algorithm would be sort of this is within a sub, this is a sub-step of progressive hedging, and then within that you would have this iterative algorithm to solve that. Okay. Um, and so basically you alternate between solving a mixed integer linear program where all I've done basically is taken this uh, quadratic objective and linearize it at my current iterate uh, x, uh, this, this x, uh, say, t minus 1. Uh, so that's just that linearization there. Um, and so that's the mixed integer linear program I can solve with my off-the-shelf uh, software. Um, I take the solution of that, I add it to this, this set of solutions, and then I solve a convex continuous quadratic program over the convex hull of that, which I can do by just sort of writing out sort of explicitly, since this is sort of a, a given list of points, I just write out the convex hull, um, and so this is sort of a, a quadratic program. Um, and so, you know, this thing will actually converge because there's only finally, finally many solutions I can eventually add in this first step. This will converge finitely to an optimal solution to this thing up here. Okay, so that's okay. That's an improvement. So we have something that we could try to do now that, that's sort of solving mixed integer linear programming subproblems at each step. Um, okay, so that thing must be solved at every iteration of this progressive hedging algorithm. Um, but, you know, it's sort of not so ideal because we'd have to, you know, do also many iterations inside at each iteration of, of the, this Frank Wolf simplicial decomposition. Um, and so one obvious improvement is to take, instead of starting with that set and, you know, sort of restarting at every iteration of P, pH iteration, I'll just use the last set and gradually build it up over time. Okay, so um, this, you know, this has an expense because I'm having a, a longer list of points, so my, my quadratic program subproblem might get slower. But in practice, that's sort of a, a good trade-off for us because really the mixed integer linear program subproblem is still probably going to be the, the bottleneck in this in any case. Okay, so, so we're happy with that if we can uh, have fewer uh, steps in that, that inner, step, inner iterations here. Um, so that would be an improvement. That's a sort of a practical idea. Um, but taking this you know, a step further, we thought, well, can we get away with just doing one iteration of this implicit decomposition at every step. Okay, so rather than having an iterative method within the overall progressive hedging iterations, let's try to do just one sort of mixed integer linear program at each step. Okay, so that turns out we can do that. And so this is what the overall sort of method ends up looking like. Uh, we start out with some, some initial set, um, a subset of the, the, the convex hull, or the extreme points of the convex hull. Um, uh, we have some, some initialization. Um, and so at each step, basically, we're going to solve two different subproblems. So all of these decompose by scenario. So the first thing we do is we just solve 
uh, evaluate the Lagrangian at the current uh, uh, lambda solutions, um, take the optimal solution of that, and add it to our, our accumulated set of extreme point solutions. And then we solve the convex QP over that accumulated set of extreme point solutions. Um, and we use the optimal solution of that convex QP to sort of iterate in the progressive hedging algorithm. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So you solve basically, it all decomposes by scenario. You solve one MILP and then one uh, con continuous uh, quadratic program. Uh, any questions on, on how the algorithm works? Okay. Um, okay, so how, does, how do we assure this converges? Um, basically, the, the, sort of the, the, the key sort of lemma that we have, and it's, it's a very sort of simple observation really, um, is that at every iteration, if this solution that came out of the, 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 the inner approximation that we're using within the algorithm, so that's, that's this thing here, if it's not an optimal solution to the true thing, that's sort of the key subproblem I would want in the progressive hedging algorithm where I had the actual convex hole, then we can show that at the next iteration when I solve that mixed integer linear program, we're going to get a new point that wasn't in our current set VS, so that's growing. Okay, so that's, you do that. And so because the, the, the set of extreme points of the convex hole is finite, eventually this doesn't happen anymore. And so eventually my solution to that inner approximation quad, uh, quadratic program are actually going to be exactly what I need for the key subproblem of progressive hedging. And at that point, the, the convergence follows from progressive hedging standard analysis or ADMM analysis. So, so that's all, all there is, is to convergence, and so we're able to get that. Um, and so, so you know, basically, th there's a, a small detail about initializing this thing so you don't get, get some, some hiccups. Uh, but if you do, do that, uh, this will converge to that, that Lagrangian dual that we were hoping to get. Um, and at every step of the, the algorithm, we're also getting a lower bound by, by the computations we're doing by solving those mixed integer linear programs. Um, OK, so let's compare this version of, of this progressive hedging um, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the sort of heuristic version that, that you could run before. Um, and, and here I'm, I'm only looking at dual bounds, so, so not looking at primal solutions at all here, just, just to see how this works for, for dual bounds. Uh, for three different uh, uh, test problems, we'll, we'll see how this works. And we're going to vary this penalty parameter row. Um, and so we're going to see sort of consistent pictures, so I'll, I'll take a little more time on this first one. Here's a problem that had, um, let's see, uh, 100 scenarios, not so many first stage variables, but quite a few second stage binary variables, which makes these uh, pretty hard to solve. Um, and so here in these pictures, the solid lines correspond to uh, this version that we introduced where you add this uh, uh, mixed integer linear program and, and the convex inner approximation. And the dashed lines are sort of that, that heuristic version of, of, of just directly applying progressive hedging. Um, and you see exactly what, what, what John Powell was mentioning before. If you look at the dashed lines, for different, depending on the value of rho that you choose, you might converge too early and not get the best possible bound. Okay. Uh, whereas if you're looking at the solid lines, they all seem to eventually converge to the bound that, that we want. Um, of course, they do so at different rates. So it's, it's still a little bit sensitive to that parameter, and you want to be able to, to choose that. But the good news here is that I'm free now to choose a parameter that's efficient for the algorithm, because I know no matter what, it's, it's going to converge. Whereas in this case, uh, the interesting thing is that the parameters that look the most likely to actually converge, so for example, this, this red one, um, happen to be the ones that have sort of uh, slow convergence. Okay? So you have to be kind of taking your time, and eventually you get up there. If you try to be too aggressive, uh, you, you sort of fail early. Okay, so we see that sort of uh, uh, consistently th throughout these. So here's another example, uh, 250 scenarios, a little bit more first stage variables. Uh, th this one only had continuous second stage variables. Here we see the oscillation that uh, John Paul mentioned uh, with these dashed ones, but, but using the, the, the sort of modified version, we're able to get convergence uh, in, in each of the cases. Um, and a similar thing for uh, yet a different um, a test instance. Um, okay, so um, I think I basically said all these things already. Uh, basically, you know, the nice thing, nice thing is uh, with this, this thing here, uh, the speed depends on the choice of row, but we're consistently getting convergence to the, the bound that we wanted. Um, and so that's, that's what we hoped for. 
Um, so there's just a few more enhancements I want to mention. I think John Paul did a really good job. OK, I'll, I'll be plenty early, actually. Um, so um, a really good job sort of talking about some of the, the, the enhancements. Some of those other things probably could be used here as well. I'll just mention a few. Uh, one thing in particular is that it's still pretty expensive to solve a different mixed integer linear program for every different scenario in our, in our, our problem in every iteration. And so one thing that's nice about this progressive hedging framework is you can sort of skip that. For some of those, in, in, this, in this algorithm framework, for some of those, those mixed integer linear programs, uh, if we sort of don't think that, that we really need to update that set VS, we can just skip those and only sort of solve those MILP subproblems for the scenarios that we think that sort of needing updates. So, so we don't have to do all of those at every iteration. Um, and, and here we might use some heuristics to find which ones are, are needed. Um, or you know, maybe you don't skip it, but you solve it approximately, as similar to what, what John Paul was mentioning. Um, um, if you, there's also ways to get an upper bound. So sometimes you evaluate an upper bound. You fix the first stage solution, and then you go through all the scenarios and solve the second stage problem. And that's a way to get an upper bound. And once you've done that, you can take the solutions that you got from that and add that to this set of sort of inner approximation sets, sort of, sort of make that richer. So you may as well use that information as well. Um, it's easy to do this synchronously in parallel. So, so you have, uh, you know, at each step, you have separate mixed integer linear program and convex QP subproblems per iteration. Uh, as John Paul mentioned, though, if you did this with mixed integer linear programs, the, the, making this synchronous could really sort of slow things down and limit the scalability. Um, but, but it's also quite easy to do sort of a, a semi asynchronous version of this. Uh, where those mixed integer linear program and subproblems, I, can I don't have to wait for all of those. It's sort of given the same observation that I can skip some. So I don't wait for all of them. I just eventually add those when they do finally solve. But I go ahead and take my step um, after solving all the convex QP subproblems. Okay? So as long as I solve all the, the, the convex QP subproblems and then do that, I can still sort of make this thing eventually converge. Um, okay, so I call it semi asynchronous because we still have that synchronous step on the. the convex QP part. Um, OK, so the last thing I'll just close with the open question, and maybe some people in the audience might be better to analyze this than me. Um, you'll notice our convergence analysis is, you know, OK, it converges, but it was a bit unsatisfactory in the sense that we go through this step where, in the worst case, you have to enumerate all the possible points of this extreme, you know, the, this convex hull of extreme points, and then you get convergence after that. Um, it would be really nice to understand if there's really a true convergence rate in, in, in the sense of, of does this thing converge um, starting somewhere else at, at some classical rate. Um, okay, so that's it. Thank you.